Hey everyone, Mr. Sugeno here. So you want to play Wii U games on your PC? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's get started. So I'm going to try to keep this video at a high level to make things easy to follow. But I will say, your experience emulating the Wii U will completely depend on your computer setup. The emulator system requirements are listed right beside me right here, but one important detail that it is missing is your processor. Your processor is actually going to dictate how well this emulates. Now, if you've had your computer for a number of years and it's in need of replacement, or you have a brand new computer, but you went with a very inexpensive build and your CPU is, I would say, on the lower end of the performance spectrum, you may run into some issues. Furthermore, if I do scroll down the page just a little bit, it says this and I really want to point it out. Performance and usability. CMU is not intended for general use yet. So CMU is the only emulator right now that I would recommend to use on your PC. And I will say if it doesn't necessarily work on your PC right now, it doesn't mean it won't work in the future. This emulator is improving with every single release. Every time they update it, it gets better in some way, shape or form. And it's updated regularly. The last update was April 3rd of this year. So it does get updated quite frequently. So hold tight if it doesn't work just yet or if it works, but there are still a few issues you're experiencing. To kick things off, head over to cmu.info. I will leave a link to this in the description below. So to download CMU, it's pretty straightforward. Just click on the download link. It will bring you to the bottom of the page and then click download. It is 7.3 megabytes. It's not a very big file. Next, head over to cmuhook.sshnuke.net. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. From here, grab the latest version of CMU Hook. In this video, it is currently 0.5.7.3 and download that, it is 5.6 megabytes. So here are both of the downloaded files. I will be using 7-Zip for the next steps. If you don't have 7-Zip, I will leave a link in the description below. It is a free program, but really any zip program will do. So why I like 7-Zip here, all I have to do is right click, go into the 7-Zip menu, and then go to Extract to CMU 1.18. It'll create its own folder with all of the extracted goodies in it. The next step here is to go to CMU hook, drag and drop that into the CMU folder that you just created. Right click on CMU hook, you can go to 7-Zip and just extract here. You don't need a separate folder for CMU hook. You want to extract this directly into your CMU folder. Now to run CMU, this next step is entirely up to you. You can right click it and click run as administrator or you can go down to the properties here Go to compatibility and check run this program as an administrator. So every time this program opens, it will automatically run as an administrator. For me, when I'm opening CMU, I usually just right click it and manually select run as administrator. So when you first boot up CMU, you'll be greeted with this dialog box. It's the getting started box. Now this first item here, the custom MLC01 path, you can ignore. You already have an MLC01 folder inside your CMU folder. In short, the MLC folder here contains your game saves, your installed updates, and your DLC. So you don't need to change that if you don't want to. The second option here is your game paths folder. So if you have games already ready to go for the Wii U, you can specify where they are. Now the next option here is important. It is the graphics packs. So essentially here, these graphics packs help improve games. They are community graphics packs. And all you have to do to get them is just click on it. It says download community graphics packs. So just click that and it will automatically download them for you. Now, once you're done that, you can click next. From this menu, you can configure your input settings. So for me, I'm going to be using an Xbox One controller. You can configure them in the emulator later on, but I would recommend doing it now. It's just handy to do it now and get it out of the way. Make sure things are set up right. So all you have to do here is go to which controller you're going to be using. For me, I'm going to be using controller one. So in this emulate controller menu, this is where I turn my Xbox One controller into a Wii U gamepad, a Wii U Pro controller, a classic Pro controller, or a Wii Mote. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to do Wii U gamepad. 
Something to take notice here too, Nintendo does their letterings different than the Xbox One controller. So just double check the inputs that you are doing. Maybe pull up a picture of the Wii U gamepad just to see if the buttons correspond to the buttons that you're mapping on your controller. This controller API menu here is where you select your controller. So whatever controller you've got plugged into your computer, whether it's reading as X input or direct input, I can't tell you that, you'll have to figure that one out. Uh, for me, I'm using an Xbox One controller, so it does read as an X input controller. For this next step, you have to map all of your buttons, your thumbsticks, the clicking on your thumbsticks, every single button on your controller. So it's a little tedious, but it's also fairly simple. So all you have to do is, for example, click in the A slot here, press the corresponding buttons on your controller, and it automatically maps. It's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. Now, if you do mess up, let's pretend you make a mistake. And for example, here for right, I'm just gonna click the right thumbstick by accident. All you have to do is just click into this space and then redo it. It's really simple and really straightforward. If you've messed up a bunch of things, all you have to do is click clear, clear everything out and start again. Now I don't have buttons on my controller for blow mic or show screen. So what I can do is map them to the keyboard. For example, I can do Z and X. So now I have blow mic as Z and show screen is X. Now click additional settings here and adjust your rumble. By default it is off, but you can increase it. So you can hear my controller right now rumbling as I increase the strength of the rumble. So I'm just gonna leave it at 50. You can really put it to whatever you want here. Now from here, don't forget to save your profile. So just enter a name. I'm gonna put Xbox controller. You can enter whatever you'd like and just make sure to save it. Once you're done that, you can select some additional options if you want. Start games with full screen, open separate pad screen, or automatically check for updates. I do like automatically checking for updates because I want the latest and greatest version of this emulator. Now really quick, if you did have issues saving your controller settings, you can do it from the options menu here. Just go into options, input settings, and then put a profile name in for your controller and click save. It should save all of the presets you already did. Now, if your games aren't showing up for some reason, you can go into options, general settings, and set your game path manually here. In the general settings menu as well, there is a Discord presence option if you use Discord. You can just leave that unchecked if you want. If you go into the graphics settings, it defaults to OpenGL. For this here, I'm going to switch it to the Vulkan Experimental. This is entirely up to you. Try it out in OpenGL if it works fine, great. If it doesn't, try Vulkan Experimental if your graphics card supports it. So I have a GeForce RTX 2060 Super, which does support Vulkan. In here as well, I can enable VSync if I want to stop any screen tearing. So if I'm moving around and I'm noticing some screen tearing, I can fix it here if I want. Now for the upscale filter, it's set at bi-cubic, but I'm going to switch it to bilinear. I've had better experience with bilinear, but you can test it out yourself to see what works best here. Same for downscale filter. Now in terms of your overlay, I recommend turning your FPS on. Place it wherever you want on your screen, but I do recommend having it on. That way you can see if you're running into performance issues. When your FPS decreases, you're getting worse performance. And if you see it dropping down to, I don't know, five to 10 FPS and your game is running really slow, it just confirms that things aren't correct. Now for the overlay, this is completely optional, but I do recommend it. I do recommend turning at least the FPS counter on. That way you'll be able to tell if you're running into performance issues. So if you see your FPS dropping in certain areas, maybe you enter a shrine and the FPS completely drops, you will know you have to tweak some graphic settings to get some additional performance. In the audio tab here, you can do direct sound or X audio too. Choose whatever sounds best on your computer. Now, if your game has no sound, it might just be that the sound is being pumped to the wrong location. So from here, you can manually set it if you want. I'm going to manually set it to put the sound to my headphones. So now I'm going to change the settings specifically for Breath of the Wild. So whatever games you have installed on your computer, they'll show up on this list and you can change settings on a game by game basis. These settings can help speed up your game, help it look prettier, help you cheat. There are different options that you can change for each game. So just to show you, I will choose Breath of the Wild here and change a few things. Now, if I go into enhancements, I can do things like clarity here, no ambient occlusion. It all depends on what I want to do. 
I'll go into graphics. One thing I do want to do is increase the resolution. So by default, it is 720p. If I go down the list here, I can do 1920 by 1080 to really make it look nicer. If you run into performance issues, you can always try decreasing this and see how it works. You can also bump it up if you want. In the mods section here, you can go into cheats if you want and change a few things and, and really have some fun with the game. Uh, for me, I'm going to go into FPS++ and make sure all of these are enabled. So what these will do is help my game run at the best FPS possible. Right now it's set at 60. I can also slow it down to 30 if I want, but I'm going to keep it at 60. In the workarounds menu, there's one thing I am going to change. So it says Grass Swing here Vulcan. Now if you remember, I specifically set it to Vulcan in the graphics menu. So I'm just going to check this here. I don't have an Intel GPU, so I don't need to check this one at all. And I, I'm not using OpenGL, so I don't have to check either of those. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do for Breath of the Wild right now. Now if you want to change anything else in that menu, you absolutely can. Feel free to tinker around with the settings, maybe trying to get yourself a better frame rate or better graphics. If you mess something up and make an error, you can just uncheck it and undo it. Now before I run Breath of the Wild, I do want to right click it and edit my game profile. Now for me personally, I have an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, so I have eight cores available. So I will push this up to triple core recompiler and change the thread quantum here to 100,000 cycles. This should let me get 60 frames per second fairly constantly in the game. For more information on this, I'll leave a link to this in the description below, but it lets you know which recompiler to use based on your CPU core situation. So right now I'm running an eight core uh, CPU, so I can use the triple core recompiler without issue. If you have a four core uh, processor with only one thread per core, you're stuck at dual core. So you can kind of see what I'm getting at here. Now, there aren't a lot of notes for compatibility with multi-core recompilers, but there are a couple notes here at the very bottom. I'll just try to bring this up just a little bit. And it says here, for example, Xenoblade and Kirby and the Rainbow Curse will crash if you try to use multi-core recompilers. Now, if you have DLC or updates for your game, once your game is read, you can go to Install Game Update or DLC, click this, and apply any updates for your game. So here's Breath of the Wild up and running. Just above me, you can see it's running at a constant 60 frames a second. No, I just didn't copy and paste something there. Uh, you just saw it recompiling some shaders as well to kind of prove that it is running at 60 frames a second. Everything looks nice and smooth at this point. The game looks absolutely gorgeous. So I will say in terms of frames a second, it will really depend on your own computer setup what CPU you have, what GPU you have. It all depends on your computer setup and whether or not your computer can actually handle CMU. On top of that, feel free to tweak around with the graphics settings. The settings that I went over, you can kind of play around to see what works for you. If you do change something and it's not quite right, you can always just delete CMU altogether and then just reinstall it, reopen it if need be. That is one thing that is great about CMU is you can wipe your settings very easily if you do mess something up. But anyways, I'm going to be enjoying Breath of the Wild for a little bit here on my computer. If you did like the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you everyone. Take care.